as i was not able to make a video last week because of various circumstances i just posted this post on the community regarding various suggestions whatever you want me to do on my next video so people have suggested that is most people you uh, have suggested that uh, i need to make a video on my experiences at vitap university and yes i felt i already made four videos and i covered most of the topics but one important topic what i have been getting requests from various students is the exam uh, pattern or the exam what happens in vitap university how is the procedure and other important aspects that need to be discussed is the cgpa is it going to be uh, important or is it going to affect in your career of placements or various other things is the cgpa is going to affect or if you are interested to get a high cgpa how you can get that so in this video i am going to cover both these important topics you can just stay tuned to until the end and if you still have any questions you can just feel free to subscribe and like and comment your doubts in the comment section below and i will be happy to reply each and every one of you if you still have a detailed query regarding vitap university or various other aspects you can just mail me as well i will be happy to reply just that it might take some time so why delay let's dive in right into the video on the specific video of various examination aspects and cgpa aspects at vitap university Before starting the video for those of you who do not know me my name is Vivek I host this channel I am a member of a first graduating batch from VITAP university I have done my bachelor's from VITAP university and I am 21 graduating batch I am an ECE student and I did attend placements and various other aspects so I will be happy and I already make videos regarding various aspects of VITAP university so starting off with this video let's talk about the initial exam pattern and how the procedure of writing examination happens at vit all the campuses mostly as per my knowledge not just my campus every campus of vit follows this procedure basically it is not a old school method where you will be writing your examination in a paper and they you will be submitting it and they will be correcting it and they will be returning back to you with scores that was a old school method you probably had that in your schools but that is not is followed these days and in most universities vit is one of those first university to introduce this pattern of uh, digital tablets where they just give you tablets during your examination you just need to write your answers and everything on that and unfortunately you don't have those 5 or 10 minutes extra when the invigilator is collecting those papers in the end to write your examination immediately as time goes off the paper will be submitted automatically and that is how the examination works because of uh, the digital system completely going on basically vit has given some kind of contract or they have some kind of link with other companies out there and one company was elitmus uh, so probably who have conducted our uh, Uh, examinations when we were the students so probably they are uh, the same company which is uh, continuing with the policy of uh, conducting the digital examinations so what happens basically here is they bring the tablets a uh, couple of days before the examination from outside university doesn't own all these tablets and they basically bring all those back to the university from somewhere uh, basically this set of tablets go around all the campuses and all the other linked universities with this specific company they bring the tablets they charge it at the university and every student has various slots of examination right basically cat examination happens for about one and a half hour so uh, 9 o'clock slot 12 o'clock slot 4 o'clock slot 5 o'clock slot so basically this uh, full day is divided into five slots and same sets of tablets are used for five times so that most of the students cover writing the examination with uh, a limited set of tablets so this is how the procedure works and basically uh, it is a comp- it is just like a tablet whatever you would have seen or used at your home but uh, it doesn't have any other uh, any other ap- applications or anything you just they just open you the um, examination paper you need to enter your login and uh, they, they just give you with the password and when you open it your examination starts immediately Uh, if the exam starts at 9 o'clock and close at 10:30 that is what uh, it happens and uh, you cannot take even a minute more than that that is how the examination pattern happens and few people have asked me if this was difficult to write on those tablets 
yes it is uh, quite difficult if you are not used to that because uh, we are uh, used to writing with our pressure and with a sharp tip pen on paper right that feels different but here the surface is completely smooth and they give a separate stylus right so we need to write uh, on a smooth surface using a diff completely different pen which we are not used to of course it is difficult but you need not worry about that because uh, when I was a student, of course, I think this will be followed even now. They have a um, trial kind of sessions where they hand over you or give you the tablet and the pen so that you can just experiment with it and understand how it works. And basically before every examination as well, they have some kind of 10 minutes or something where you can uh, try out with your uh, um, smart pad as well you can write something that is just kind of a practice session so basically you can just try out there calibrate your uh, uh, stylus before the examination or you can uh, practice it before you can just ask them or they are usually going to conduct a session on that so on coming to the usage of uh, the smart pads there is nothing you need to worry about it is very easy and this is how the system works they bring the pads you need to write the examination and you need to submit it so now that I have explained about the examination procedure of the tablet, let's go on to see the results and how the procedure works. Once you submit the paper, that is, if you complete before the time, you can submit the whatever answer script you have written or else you can just um, immediately it gets submitted after the time is up. The paper gets uploaded on a cloud that is exam cloud or EP cloud. They have separate website of their own. It gets uploaded there and the faculty has access to that website. Uh, it, gets, it just gets sent directly to their portal. They can access it and immediately after the examination it just takes one or two days to upload, get uploaded and they start correcting and this procedure is very efficient because uh, it is on their laptop directly and they, they are going to correct it the marks are going to get uploaded there and once uh, most of the professors have completed the correction they are going to plan a date and they are going to announce the results as well once the results are announced you are going to get a separate mail on that uh, that results are announced or else if the even you are not getting a mail the results are usually posted even before you get a mail because uh, one by one professors start submitting and the uh, results start updating on the portal itself so this is how the system works regarding the examination marks as well going on to see the weightage of these examinations that is cat fat etc what you can do that is the best practice you can do is to go check on the vtop that is a website whatever they have given and there they have separate section where they will explain you about the weightage of each subjects uh, this is because uh, not every subject has equal weightage for fat cat etc because they have separate lab component as well and various other uh, assignment components etc so uh, i suggest you to check out the vtop for a specific pattern regarding each subject of whatever is there one more important query is regarding the closed book and open book examination probably um, until the bachelors we would have never carried a book to our examination room and when we start feeling the scenario of uh, carrying a book to the examination it feels completely awkward and uh, it, we do not know a proper method of preparation uh, for the specific kind of examinations so you do not need to worry about that you just you will just get used to that uh, the procedure is quite easy it is not a tedious one but one thing you need to note is that not all exams or not all subjects are closed book or open book there are uh, I, I classified them into three categories so that it will be helpful for you one is closed book that is you are not allowed to take any book to the examination other kind of category is open book where you can take both textbooks and notebooks to the examination one more category is where you are allowed to take only your notes but textbooks are not allowed so this is a different criteria where people would think you can just copy the complete textbook to the notebook and take it to the examination but uh, uh, that is a different stage but uh, this is what happens and we have three different criteria based on the subject code they will uh, let you know you do not need to worry about uh, what is open book and what is closed book based on the subject code itself you will be able to understand that they will conduct a separate orientation session regarding this as well so based on this you will be writing your examination about open book and closed book and similarly you will be writing it on the ep cloud the, you will be writing it on the tablet and results are ported on the ep cloud and that is how the procedure works regarding this one more important aspects what you need to consider about cgpa most people have been asking me where uh, CGPA is going to help me or affect my placements because uh, if I do not pass this specific cutoff or if I am below this specific cutoff, 
will i not be eligible for placements and if i have a lower cgpa than my friends will it affect my placements so of course i understand this uh, mm, this kind of a worry because uh, i was under uh, this as well uh, when i graduated from uh, vit in four years my cgpa was around 9.03 and i was uh, third from my department but before uh, during the placements that is 3 1 or 3 2 my cgpa was not really near 9 it was 8.8 .8 or something so i was uh, uh, some companies where the extremely top companies they rarely set a cutoff for 9 okay most companies have it for 6 or 7 uh, or uh, not more than that but rarely very some companies as per my experience as per what i remember they have a cutoff for 9 so i was not eligible for that and i did not take part in those uh, interviews or those companies but still i got placed i got placed in a core company so as uh, i was placed you need not worry about that i was the first batch now as students grow opportunities also grow and uh, you will get much more companies to attend so you need not worry about cgpa cutoff to the placements as well very rarely do companies have a cutoff for 9 but 6 or 7 is going to be the most common cutoff they are also uh, going to have a cutoff for your uh, basically plus 12 as well that is 12th or sometimes we call it as intermediate as well they are going to have it for around 60 percent as well so you need to um, eligible you need to be eligible or classify for this both criteria and once you are checked off uh, in these both criteria you can you can easily attend placements there is no worries regarding that and you need not worry about placements or the competition except that it depends on your individual talent and in your individual focus of how you can uh, uh, basically attend that or uh, how much cgpa you can get what company you can get is basically on your pure talent and nothing else do not need to worry about that so coming to the aspect where uh, students are going for masters they are required to get a good cgpa because uh, countries like uh, where countries like canada or sometimes some universities in usa have more emphasis on cgpa as well so for those students i recommend to work hard and i recommend you guys to work hard get a cgpa about 8.5 and 9 if you are very good if you work decently hard so that uh, it will be very good for you when uh, your it, it, it portrays a good projection of your profile if you are on top percentile right and one more important cgpa aspect which you need to consider is the absolute and relative grading which is one of the most important one of the most important aspect which will define your cgpa because uh, CGPA in these kind of universities does not just depend on your performance it depends on the performance of the complete class for example if you are a good student and the class has decent performance students most of them then you are going to get a better grade than compared to all the students also another scenario where you are performing a good student similarly as the previous case but most of the students are excellent in your class then your grade is not going to be same as the previous uh, once previous situation so basically this system is called as absolute grading and your marks or your grade depends completely on other students performance so uh, the slots whatever you are taking the students whoever are with you or the faculty who is grading are very important in your cgpa they determine your cgpa in a very drastic manner in a very critical manner so you need to consider all these aspects and this is what determines a good cgpa also one important aspect which most students neglect is the laboratory session and the lab marks weightage to your cgpa uh, because i was one of the students who neglected lab or um, i have seen a lot of students who have neglected lab and uh, the score whatever is going to get if you get low the cgpa is going to affect because lab marks do not have any multiplication parameters or reduction parameters they are usually added directly so your cgpa is going to affect directly right each mark counts in the absolute grade in relative grading so one one mark will determine what cgpa you are going to land and what grade you are going to land in that specific subject and what cgpa you are going to get at the end of the semester so i suggest you not to neglect lab as well so these are various criteria which you need to consider before uh, getting a proper cgpa before worrying about cgpa these are various aspects which you need to consider so that's it guys i have covered various aspects on how or what kind of aspects you need to consider before uh, uh, worrying about cgpa before getting a proper cgpa or uh, and uh, what aspects you need to focus on before uh, for getting a good cgpa also i have covered about how the 
um, tablet examination goes on how the digital examination goes on and what aspects you need to consider for understanding of uh, the initial like impressions regarding this as well so thank you so much for staying out so long if you still need a detailed video on this topics do comment it in the comment section below and if i get a proper number of requests i will be happy to make one more video on the atap series thank you so much for staying out so long this is vague signing off stay safe stay informative